Okay, this is a tutorial on how to make an isoline graph, contour graph, using Jupyter. Uh, so this is sort of like what we're doing on the last day. It, hopefully it's going to be a lot, pretty easy just like it was on, um, pretty easy and quick. I don't want to say it's easy, but pretty quick, I should say, like we did the activity on Tuesday where we made a histogram. All right, so anyway, we've been looking at isolines and making iso... Um, topological contour map things. Uh, and so how do we do one of these in Jupyter? So uh, I'm going to just like create a new, this is what I recommend you do is just create a new um, collab notebook. So if you go to Google Drive, I'm just going to open up Google Drive, and to make a new collab uh, notebook, you would just click new, scroll down to more. We're not making a Google Doc, we're not making a Google Slide, we're making a Google Collaboratory. Collaboratory. I don't know why I call it collab and collab. Is it collab or collaboratory? Okay. So you would change this from mine title to into like my contour map file. And you know, you should always start by putting your name at the top of the page. So let's type in our name in here. Enrique, you know, I'm in science class, ELP or whatever. High five. West. Look how many typos I make. It's funny how when I see you guys working in class, there's all these little typos you make. And we're just so used to having like Microsoft Word autocorrect those, but whenever we type into like something like Jupyter or something else, it doesn't autocorrect. Um, so you have to go back and autocorrect yourself. <laughs> so like I, I see a lot of mistakes happening because of case sensitive things in programming. Don't let that stop you. Just debug yourself. Be constantly paranoid about how you do things, right? And if you want to hit enter, there's these little bracket things. Oops. You do that and it like makes it look nice. Okay, anyway, uh, so first thing we do when we do any Jupyter Notebook is we cut and paste the libraries. I'm also going to read in the data files at the same time. So let's import the data files and the libraries at the same time. So this, t so cut, paste, Play. So what I've done here is imported all the math libraries, all the plotting libraries, which include the plotting. This is the same stuff we've been importing every time. And I'm going to add a new code block. Uh, and this is also reading in the data right here. So if I put a little hashtag in here, I'm going to make a comment in here. The hashtag means I can comment. This is reading in the data file. So I actually read in two data files for you. Um, I'm going to do an example using temperature distribution. And then your job is to make a contour plat plot of map one. Map one was in your homework, okay? So you had last time. So you actually did map one. Um, I don't have that file uh, handy, so but it's on your home. Here, I'll see if I can find it. Map one. I'll show you what it is. So if I'm in three A, doesn't. Oof, this is gonna take forever. Oh, uh, let's see. Lag, right? So last time we did ISO lines work. And if you did this PDF in class or at home, map one is the one that says map one. See how it says map one right there? That is map one. So what I did is, is I made a, um, a file uh, in a spreadsheet, a comma separated value file, a CSV file that has these numbers in there, 9, 9, 11, 17, 20, 22. I typed them all in, took me a few minutes, but high five. And then I uploaded that to a GitHub repository, which is just a place on the internet, on the cloud where it is. And if I click on contour map, it's in my data sets folder where everything I put everything in there. So um, map1.csv is the thing you're going to be working on. So what am I going to turn in at the end of the day? At the end of the day, I'm going to turn in map1, which is what I drew last time, except I'm going to turn that in, um, except I'm going to have Jupyter Notebooks make an I, uh, the ISO lines in there. It's going to draw a contour graph of that. Okay, so high five. I'm going to do an example here using temperature distribution data. That looks a lot like um, the map one data. Okay, so let's go ahead and so I just imported these um, these things into the new file, which is called Untitled Two. So these have been imported. So now I'm going to like go ahead and look at my data. So how do I look at my data? Data head. So let's, um, let's look at the first like four rows of data and see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like, okay? This is my temperature distribution data. Notice that I've called data 
my temperature distribution data. And data two is called um, the map one. So I know this is gonna sound weird, but if I look, let's make a new code block. If I look at data two dot head, data two dot head, and I'll look at the first four rows of that, it's like your um, homework, okay? It should be exactly like your homework. So there's, see how it says 9, 9, 11, 17, 22. So if I, if I look at my homework file, CS is 9, 9, 11, 17, 20, 20. So these, these numbers are saved as data 2. Does that make sense? So data 2 is um, what you're going to be using. Data is what I'm going to be using as an example. So I hope that makes sense. If that's too abstract for you, you can, when it's your turn, you can just rename data to data. You can just delete that number 2 and reload it and then just um, run your code. Uh, okay, so let's make another code block because um, this is what the data looks like. Uh, the temperature distribution data um, looks like this guy up here. And how do I make a contour graph of that? So you're going to use a function called, oof, I, I forget what it is, but I did it before. I did it yesterday. It's called plt contour. So we've been using plt plot and plt hist. Now we're going to use plt contour. Uh, and this is a function, so you have parentheses in it. And how it works is, I know this is kind of weird, but it actually works with three variables, x, y, and z. So let me try and explain what each one of these is. So z, this z, this z variable is these values right here. This is like your array of numbers that the values of the temperature distribution, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead like, and call, so, like, I know this sounds weird, but you can put, like, um, you can just call that data, I believe. Data is going to be, I think that's right. I think that's all I have to do. So, like, out of curiosity, if I hit play, what do you think is going to happen? Error message? Error message, right? Like, yeah. So it doesn't know what X and Y are. So, um, contour of the data. So what are the X values? So the X and, so I know this sounds weird, but uh, if you look at your, let me look at your homework here. I know this is going to look a little weird, but like, look at your homework here. Like, maybe this one right here. Oh, this is, haha. Maybe these numbers look familiar to you because I'm actually just using these temperature field measurements. Okay, so the temperature field measurements, this is this problem. I'm going to create the um, contour map for this, which you've already, already done. So this is my example. Okay, so I know this is going to sound weird, but like, see how these um, all have an x, y coordinate? Like, so there's a little scale down here at the bottom. Zero meters, one meter, two meters, three meters, four meters. What this is saying is the temperature right here is, let's pretend this is zero, zero. It didn't give me a y-axis, but I'm just assuming it's zero, one, two, three, four. Does that make sense? So like, this is zero, zero. This is my origin. And then this one is one meter away from the origin to the right, but zero up, right? It's um, one comma zero, right? So, so these all have x, y coordinates. Does that make sense? So like this one right here, that's two comma two, right? Three comma two, five comma five. So all of these have little x, y coordinates. And that's what it, the contour um, code needs. It needs the x coordinates and the y coordinates to make the contour map. This is the wrong one, I'm sorry. So like, um, so this x and y is like the coordinates for each one, okay? So um, how do I do that? How do I get like x, y coordinates? So I'm gonna go ahead and make a function that uh, creates an array of x and y values, okay? So I'm just gonna create it, because I already know what it is, it's x equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and that kind of thing. So the, so the way, there's actually a shortcut here. Um, there's another function in the math. It's called, it's in NumPy. So NumPy arrange. That's what I want to copy and paste, control C. So my X is, I did lowercase X. I Probably that is better than capital X, but I'm going to use capital X. So what does this do? It did something. I hit execute, but what did it do? So let's add a code block in here and just call x. And numpy arrange 0, 5, 1. So what it did was it started at 0. It had five elements in length 
and it incremented by 1. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I don't know if that makes sense, but like it starts at 0. It has five elements in the array. The array is just the thing, the numbers inside of there. Um, and it separates them by 1. Okay, so like if you wanted to do five elements separated by 0 0.1, uh, what that's going to do is create 0. Oh, my bad. It's not five elements. It's 0 to 5. Uh, incrementing by 1.1. 1. 1. Okay, so there you go. Live and learn. <laughs> Let's see. But anyway, for what I'm doing here, I'm just, there's, there's it's going to be, I just need an array that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is going to do it for me. So why did I pick this number? Because if you look at like the uh, temperature data, there's five, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's five of these guys, right? And so I'm going to call the x's 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let me just like make hit this point over the head by looking at this. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is like I'm giving each one of these an x coordinate 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Okay? Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing with y. So y is the exact same code. I don't have to change anything. So I'm going to do this. Um, where's my untitled code here? Let's make a new code block. Um, so this is going to make me an array of numbers that it's the exact same array. Like I didn't actually change anything but the variable name, so it's going to be the same thing. And then finally, like I'm going to make a mesh grid. Now mesh grid is just going to create. You'll, let me just show you what this will do. Control C. It's going to make like um, ordered pairs, okay, of x and y. It's just a, it's just a nice way. Let me let me just show you. So let me hit play. Now I, oof, you know why I did an error? X not defined. It's because it's I made it lowercase x, and I actually called this uppercase x. So I can see why I picked lowercase x. So I can change this a number of different ways. I'm just going to call this x and this one y. It's going to redefine x and y forever, but whatever. Okay, so in fact doesn't like it because it's lowercase y. I did lowercase y. See how cases matter, man? Cases matter in life. All right. So there we go. So I'm going to call up x and y and I'll show you what this stuff looks like now. So this made ordered pairs for everything. So let me explain. So x now looks like this. See how like, okay, let me, let me bring up y and I'm trying to explain both of them. So uh, let's call up y and see what it looks like. Okay, so the x... Did you see what it's doing? It's like, it's doing, okay, so just the x values. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I go back to, like, um, my ISO lines work, what's the x value for this one? 0. What's the x value for this one? 1. What's the x value for this one? 2, 3, 4. Because the x values are just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, what about the y values? They're going to be, like, let's look at the y values, right? So the y values are 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So does that make sense? The y values are, where'd they go? The y values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh-huh. That's not, that doesn't make sense. The origin should be down here, right? This should be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right now it's saying 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's actually going like backwards of what I want it to do. Um, so if I create the contour map, my contour map is going to be like upside down. So there is actually, let me show you what it looks like um, when I make it upside down, because the first time I made this, I actually made it upside down. So now I have my X and Y and my data, so I can actually, like, I can go back up here and hit the play button, and it will create a contour graph. So there you go. There's what my contour graph looks like. And it actually, this is the correct contour graph. It looks exactly like the one you're supposed to have drawn, except for it's flipped. Let me, let me try to explain. Um, because so see that these lines are colored. This this is the x coordinate and the y coordinate, right? So let me let me put in um, just type in this thing. It's uh it's like color bar I think a PLT color bar I think is what it's called PLT color bar. If you just type that in, I think that works. Let me just hit play. So that will actually nope of course not. What I have to look back. It's like color bar. What is it called? Oh I have to put the parentheses in there. Um, parentheses. Okay, little details matter. Okay, so the color bar tells me the value of everything. So if you look at like this, um, it's getting darker, right, as it gets lower in temperature. So this is like the lowest temperature right here. 
upper left hand corner is the lowest temperature. So if I go to like my ISO lines work, the lowest temperature is not up here. It's down here, right? Like, or even down here, pardon me. So the down here is like the lowest temperature. So it, the whole thing is like flipped sideways. So here's the reason it's doing that is because the Y values need to be flipped. So um, these zeros are, um, where is it? No, this is the wrong file. Sorry, I'm, I'm like going back and forth between files, but apologize. So like, um, so this thing, uh, these values right here need to be flipped. Usually zero, the way you define it is zero, zero is in the bottom left-hand corner. So what you can do is a command called, I think it's called NP flip, which flips the array. Let me just look at my cheat code here. N, NPy flip will flip it. So I just went ahead and flipped it in the contour graph. I'll do that again. So um, if I'm plotting Y, I can just flip my Y, NP flip. What this does is it rearranges my Y's and my, ah, uh, so they're upside down. Anyway, there you go, man. So now the lowest temperature is in the bottom left-hand corner, and that's how it was originally. So this contour map uh, is what you, how you do it for the um, temperature. So I know this was sort of long-winded, but like, how would I do this again for my map one? You're going to change, you're going to change your data so that you can import your data as data and just run the code again. Um, but you're going to have to go through and make your X and Y's so that they fit the data. Like, I know this is going to be an extra step, but it's, you know, it's not that painful, man. So I made, why did I pick four? Why did I pick zero, five, and one? Because I want an X and Y coordinate for each one. So if I go to like, if I go to my homework, this is, this has an X, Y coordinate for each one, right? It's four, excuse me, five by five, right? What is yours going to look like? Um, so yours, yours is map one. So see how there's five elements and then there's six. So you're going to have to change one of them. Uh, but you should get a contour graph of map one uh, just by making a couple of changes to the code. So see if you can do that. Um, I'll be around uh, via Zoom or in the classroom if you're having issues. And then you'll have a color uh, contour ISO line thing. These are the cool ISO lines, man. Uh, they should look hopefully like the homework you did last time. And then you're done. Done for the time. High five. Uh, thanks for checking in. God bless you guys. Uh, see you later.